Hi, Fraser. Hello. Thanks for having me back. Yes, thank you for coming back. I had to before I before I started and before, before I called on Zoom, I was like, what are we doing? Because <laughs> I couldn't remember what we were talking about. So do you know what we're doing today? <laughs> I think so. We're talking about All the Young Dudes by um, Taylor Swift. <laughs> Wait, by Taylor Swift? What are you talking? I know I saw that some of that. Okay, before we get into all of that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes, All of the Young Dudes, which is a piece of fan fiction based off of Harry Potter, written by Miss King Bean 89. And we read this as our contributing, <laughs> as a contribution to Garb August, where we adventure into trash. So yes. <laughs> you found this, you actually knew about this. I don't know if you know the answer to this question, but how did you find out about this? I read an article on Slate. Um, dot com. I don't know how I came by that article, but yeah, I don't know. I must have been searching something, and then it just randomly popped up, and it was like some 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 clickbaity title that was like, "Is the best J.K. Rowling novel mm. actually, or the best Harry Potter novel actually not written by J.K. Rowling or something?" And I was like, "Is it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm intrigued. Yeah, tell me more." Right. <laughs> Actually, when you told me about all the young dudes and I started my search, I saw that Slate article. And then even, I felt like that gave the fan fiction some backbone because mm -hmm. Slate isn't a nobody website. And so for somebody on their staff to have written about this fan fiction, it really piqued my interest and kind of gave it some gravity <laughs> versus like, hi, I just found something on the internet that I'm reading. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it's like um, it has come up because it's a TikTok or Instagram phenomenon too. Oh, really? All the young dudes is? Yeah, so it has yeah. its fans out there? Yeah, huge, huge fan base. And I think it's like the number one kudoed book on uh, archive of our own for Harry Potter fan fiction now too. Like if you search just sorting by the amount of likes or whatever kudos that they give to something it's number one now so it's a well-loved piece of fan fiction well yes. today we are going to give you the absolute <laughs> ultimate and best review of fan fiction <laughs> from people who read all kinds of things <laughs> um, maybe to give you some context i've read almost 70 books this year and i know you fraser have read about 350 uh, right? yeah like 325 i think okay and most of which has not been anything to do with YA or fan fiction or anything. So this is really an adventure for us. I, if I could qualify it as an adventure. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's my first fan fiction that I've ever read too. Yeah, right, right. And if you count things that originated as fan fiction, but ended up getting published, then this is my first work of fan fiction as well in that it didn't ever get traditionally published. All right, so what is All the Young Dudes about? It is uh, set in the Marauders era. I had to learn a whole bunch of new terminology because I <laughs> wasn't aware of these things. Um, but there's tags associated with fan fiction. This is Marauders era, which means it's uh, Harry Potter's father's era, along with his friends. So the um, Padfoot, Mooney... And the other two, <laughs> Wormtail. <laughs> Wormtail and prongs. Yeah, and prongs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, from the Marauders map, which is what lends it its name. And it is mostly conforming to canon, except for that it is told primarily through Remus's perspective. He is an orphan, which is um, not something codified in the canon. And he is a werewolf, which is. <laughs> and he is, it starts off with him being recruited to Hogwarts, um, or invited, I should say, rather than recruited uh, by Dumbledore. And it's, right. yeah, his, his, you know, entire years at Hogwarts plus some. And it is longer than War and Peace. <laughs> yes, it is longer. Page count wise. Page count wise, it is longer than War and Peace, but reading experience wise, I don't think it will take you nearly as long to read 
all the young dudes, yeah. if you set your mind to it. Yeah. So basically we hung out with the James Potter, Sirius Black, Remus, what is Lupin? Remus Lupin, <laughs> yeah. Peter Pettigrew, Pettigrew, is that yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And then Lily Potter. And I would say that is essentially the main cast of characters along with some other female characters. And you're hanging out with them as they're doing pranks and stuff, getting to know one another, being friends and going through awkward situations. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to do a spoilery version and a non-spoilery ver spoilery version about this um, book. So non-spoilery, what did you think hanging out in this era? Um... I went from very positive in the beginning when it was quite cute uh, and the story beats are new to um, not completely sold on it. <laughs> um, mostly because of the page count, but I think there was also a misconception that I was given by that Slate article in that I thought it would be like a Harry Potter novel and it is not like that at all. It is more okay. about her or ostensibly this person, Miss King being 89, which there is a conspiracy uh, theory around that it might be uh, Taylor Swift. So you can <laughs> Google that and check that out. <laughs> is, is Google Smith, is, is Taylor Swift, is Google Smith, is Taylor Swift the author of the best Harry, Harry Potter fan fiction out there? That's what yeah. you ought to Google. Yeah. <laughs> if you got yeah, that out of what I said but it's cool. <laughs> yeah and um it it's definitely more about somebody the author being really interested in the characters and wanting to spend time with them rather than the expectations of a novel especially Harry Potter which are heavily plot driven novels with a little bit of characterization I think more so towards the end but in the beginning it's it's basically all just all plot all the time um whereas this is like no plot all of the time basically <laughs> <laughs> it is far more concerned about imagining the friendship dynamics and how they became friends in the years at hogwarts than you know trying to weave a intricate plot per year or anything like that eventually a through line emerges <laughs> um but it is definitely like <laughs> beside the point you know true yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely um yeah you I would say that the, the for like non-spoilery you're definitely going to be in this if you're going to read it you're going to be in this for the characters and for the love of the characters and their banter and the dynamic and um, and in the cozy world of Hogwarts. But if you think something incredible is going to burst forth, <laughs> you think that some amazingness is going to happen, that there's going to be like a really amazing action sequence or something, you know, sorry to disappoint you right now, but that's not going to happen. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 Do you have anything more to add with this? Boy yeah. Great. Okay. Um, I think that it's really good at building out a few of the things mentioned in the Harry Potter books that don't have explanations uh, throughout some of like the pranks that they devise, especially the last one I particularly liked because it mentions something, um, well, I think it's not spoiler to say, but it explains why one of the dormitories has three beds instead of four which is mentioned in the book as like a, a throwaway thing, basically. Like nobody knows why this happened. And, you know, the author was like, I know why. <laughs> that um, was good, but I didn't know that. I guess something you should, our audience, people out there ought to know is that after this or during this, you have read how many of the Harry Potter books all so of far? Them. No, I mean, like since we started reading. But you've read all of them, right? All the way up through the Deathly Hollows? Yeah, oh yeah, I read all of them. That's right. Okay, so you reread the whole series and have continued on with more fan fiction, so you probably have a better idea of what's canon compliant. <laughs> For me, the last time I read Harry Potter was when the last book came out. So, yeah, like it, over a decade ago. So yeah. I'm just more like, oh, this world is familiar. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> You're like, that's not canon compliant. That's not canon compliant. I'm like, 
Well, no, it is. I think it's all kind of compliant. A major selling point for this fiction, I think, uh, though, is the queer themes and queer characters embedded in it. And it is, yeah, I think it became very popular because of J.K. Rowling's beliefs about certain LGBTQ rights and situations, particularly with trans people. But because people didn't, were kind of soured on her, fan fiction in that universe has sort of risen quite a bit. And so it's sort of like a queer reading subversive act to reimagine or insert queerness, explicit queerness mm -hmm. into uh, her world. And so I think that's one of the main things that is interesting. And I think it does that more or less quite well, except for the fact that some relationship beats, which it's predominantly preoccupied with in the book, are repeated over and over and over again. Um, and that's some criticisms that I've seen of the book before, too, where people are kind of oh, like, I didn't know that. it's cool that they're queer, but they're also kind of toxic <laughs> with each other because they don't um, sort of evolve beyond the relationships that are kind of felt out and then codified. They just are always sort of replicating these patterns in which there's a fight and then the fighters are resolved things continue on and there's another fight <laughs> and it's exactly the same. It kind of gets a little tiring. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I love this piece of work as a reaction to what happened with Rowling in popular media. I love that people decided to like take matters into their own hand and respond in like this by creating a really safe world that is for everybody. Um, and that does focus so strongly on queer, queer themes. But as far as quality wise, <laughs> it is not the most quality piece of writing. And um, we can talk about that maybe more in the spoiler version, because I think it'll make more sense once we get into that. But yeah, as a piece of media, it's, it is fantastic and, and again, very safe, but it doesn't, it doesn't give you more than what you initially, I think, get from it. You're not continuing to like, learn more and develop with the characters it's almost like you're in a sitcom and the same tropes are being sort of repeated and played on so yeah 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 in the end I gave it a three out of five stars I was okay. kind of like it does what it it does what it sets out to do in the expectations set by the novel but if you read the slate article and it sort of implies that it's going to be like a really great Harry Potter novel, then you might have different expectations like me, um, which will hamper your enjoyment of it. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I I enjoyed, I'm like, I feel like the whole picture, well, I enjoyed some of it. And I ultimately think that the whole fan fiction, if it was an actual book being sold, it would need some severe like editing way down so I think there's like over a thousand pages and I think ultimately this whole thing could have been told in like 350 good like well-written pages and covered everything she wanted to cover and do it in the way that she wanted to do it um the author is you know she's a she and it would have been so much better <laughs> so yeah it was fun but definitely trash yeah, Swift needed a writing coach. <laughs> what? Taylor Swift needed a writing coach. Taylor Swift needed a writing coach. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she did. Yeah. All right. So, spo spoilers. What do you want to start? Uh, sure, sure, sure. Um, so towards maybe halfway, I was impressed that her writing got a lot better. Um, but I was displeased that there's like this hint at a plot uh, with the werewolves wanting to recruit Remus and it not ever <laughs> really happening. Like it, it, it seemed to me like she is really invested in the kids being kids at school for whatever reason and not being in actual danger and just being queer having their own sort of obstacles in terms of navigating their 
socioeconomic places in the world want like like James is rich and Remus is poor and that right. calls, causes rifts and then Remus of course realizing that he's gay and he needs to come out to absolutely everybody um <laughs> <laughs> and every and every person he comes out to is a major plot beat <laughs> and then yes. like as a reader it wasn't a major plot beat because we've known that he's been queer this whole time and so him coming out just felt like okay and who, how is this person going to take it oh they're going to be mad or maybe not I don't really care because this has happened <laughs> nine times now <laughs> yeah after yeah. a while got a little tiring <laughs> yeah and there's nothing generally in between it except for chapters kind of seem like just ruminations like where she just sort of had an idea in her head about these characters having like a particular scene and that will just be a chapter um and so that's why there's like 190 chapters or something mm -hmm. like that and probably i would say 12 advance the plot right like that sounds about right to me <laughs> where like there's the seeds of the of remus has an overarching thing where he wants to uh he was bitten by um grayback grayback maybe that's the name yeah <laughs> i'm not i don't think that's the actual name gray but... gray wolf? <laughs> no i don't think so but uh it might be grayback yeah fenrir grayback right something like that but anyway the only literally the only werewolf of consequence in the harry potter world he was bit by <laughs> and uh he wants to go and grayback. I was kill right. that guy oh you were right okay <laughs> <laughs> okay okay i believe you um but he wants to get revenge right he, he um, to grayback yeah yeah he wants to get revenge on grayback and essentially there's a couple beats where he does meet some werewolves who are trying to recruit him and they can exercise these like supernatural forces on him that remove his agency like in alpha pack type situation which is pretty standard werewolf fiction type thing like you're either the alpha or you're the beta um type situation and, and of course everybody wants to be the alpha so there's a fight and yeah, yeah. but go ahead go ahead um and so there's like two or three chapters where that happens where he meets somebody he gets really mad because he can't do anything <laughs> and they're all like just stay there or whatever and he's like oh why am i just staying here <laughs> that kind of thing um, like, and he gets kind of like bailed out by a teacher um, and then he's back at school having fun kind of like he's very studious we see the seeds of him wanting to become a teacher which is really fun um, but there's just mostly the same similar beats and then as he gets older it becomes more about him being gay or possibly bi we don't really know um, oh yeah oh yeah yeah and then <laughs> it transitions into the war and you're like oh yes that I was like, this is this is the part that I want to know the most about, right? Like they're out of school, right? Like so they can be in danger now, <laughs> right? Just presumably. Oh, you, you wanted know, them to be in danger. Okay, okay, okay. Go well, ahead, or ahead. just do magic and, and, and do stuff, <laughs> do stuff other than come out to people. Um, <laughs> and, there was and, a lot of emotional laboring, okay, at Hogwarts. Yeah. There was a lot of emotional laboring. Yeah, but they didn't grow from it anyway. <laughs> There was just a lot of labor, but no fruition. Um, um, but the interesting thing about it is once you once you just let that darling die <laughs> of something interesting happening in the war, because it won't. <laughs> the only things that you will find out are the things <laughs> codified in the canon already about what we know about Remus and James and Peter and Sirius and stuff. You yes. see that kind of play out but abbreviated ironically <laughs> like she's not at all interested in exploring the granularity of those aspects like going to the order um how peter um what you might call it betrays them how why sirius suspects him or uh, all that kind of stuff there's nothing mm -hmm. to do with that and it's all from remus's perspective he's always very angsty which is on brand for him he's, <laughs> he's angry all the time because he's not being included and if he is included, then it's because they want him to go infiltrate werewolves or whatever. Um, and there is an interesting chapter where he 
goes and infiltrates them and kind of found family moment and he has to choose between two worlds i like that but to me the strength of this novel has nothing to do with it being coupled to harry potter universe at all like the story that she wanted to tell is about a queer couple and it's almost beside the point that they're characters in the harry potter universe and they can do magic because he issues that completely um as he grows older and after um Sirius is sent to Azkaban he indeed just lives like a muggle and the only really 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 strong character is his uh, partner Grant who is planted at the beginning near the beginning anyway the I think beginning. it's year three or something like that mm -hmm. in the summertime right. he was like the only convincing really great character I think for me um, and he had nothing to do with that world and their sort of love story and their um needing to deal with stuff and the explicit stating of remus just never <laughs> evolving as a as like a person, as a person. Mm -hmm. yeah is yeah. kind of like there and you're like okay so this is okay this is this is a decent sort of beat that is being planted and i'm i'm picking up what it's dropping down but then you know two or three chapters later it's over and it is not even going into the part where uh they're joining the order of the the second order of the phoenix in in the canon books it's just sort of Sirius is out of prison what's up Sirius? here's grant triangle oh no triangle oh triangle and then grant is gone and they're together at the end <laughs> you're just like all right <laughs> you know like i i don't know it, it it's not wholly convincing to me because the voice that she crafted is very convincing for them in teenage years yet that voice is maintained throughout the entirety of the story Lupin doesn't feel like he does in the movies where he's empathetic endearing has grown into this uh person and they she covers that year in like a few paragraphs or whatever when he's a teacher <laughs> and I was just like but that's the best part <laughs> and we're not seeing any of that and he doesn't f yeah he just doesn't feel like that character Sirius has done kind of convincing Dumbledore not at all Moody not at all um so it just feels like why did you even want it to be set in the Harry Potter world to me but I think it is a great accomplishment that it was completed and that it was crafted you know like I, I think I just had different expectations like I wanted it to actually be a Harry Potter novel um mm. but it wasn't how about you <laughs> <laughs> so I think you're if I'm hearing correctly I think your complaints have more to do with the fact that it was so different from your expectations and especially since those expectations were built up with a connection to Harry Potter and like particularly to JK Rowling's plot beats and like the way that she crafts the plot. Um, well, <laughs> I don't know. Okay. So for me, when I started, it felt immediately really cozy because I hadn't read Harry Potter and I have tried and I'm just not interested in going back into that world really um, for a lot of different reasons. <laughs> but so when I was reading it, it was sweet, but like, it feels like somebody's fan fiction blog, which is means that like the writing is not good. The sentence structure, the word choices, um, even just like spelling errors and just grammatical errors. So on like a craft level, it was not good, but it was fun to sort of be with someone as they are seeming like they have are having fun with it. Right. You know, mm -hmm. I don't, did you get that with like the first like section, like first three years? or four yeah. years and then it was sort of like she understood what she wanted at some one point and then it was like years five through seven she was like I really want to write a queer love story set at Hogwarts where I'm using this world that she ostensibly probably really loves I'm using the author as a she because it's Miss King Bean 99 so <laughs> Taylor Swift she um and so then I felt like she actually like started to tell like a better story about the relationship and their dynamics and it start to get get more interest it got more interesting but then she's doing the plot beat over and over where remus is literally either, either coming out as queer or coming out as a werewolf like that is the only tension that there is in the relationship 
so and then I was like when they finally then it's like the years after it's like she I don't know if she ran out of steam or if she didn't know where to take the story or if she just doesn't have any experience crafting anything like a plot in which it has tension or action scenes because it's like the ideas were good like life after Hogwarts like it sounds so good it's sort of what every reader wants like it's what I want I want to see them out in the muggle world trying to make it um, and it's just like, it, she gave you very little. She just really gave you the relationship of the friends and hit on the big plot beats that she was supposed to hit on. Because at one point, yeah, when Remus is teaching at Hogwarts, I'm like, oh, fantastic. This is, this is ground that I know. This is ground that we can like really dive into and like see how Remus was there for Harry and feel this, you know, like I was like, I was ready for it. And then it was sort of like, oh, and it's over. <laughs> it was like, you blink and it's over. And so I think ultimately, I just want, wanted something more substantive from her writing. Um, and I think as a writer, she doesn't know how to do it yet. And I had to, you know, I don't know if that's what this was. I think ultimately she created characters that, you're right, she created, created characters that she like wanted to hang out with. That's what she was good at. She was good at creating dialogue and little jokes and little pranks. And there, everyone's dynamic felt very organic. Um, and then it was like whenever she moved away from that or tried to develop the plot in any way, whether it be like with the werewolves or with the war, I mean, she just kept on saying people are dying. And I was like, but how are people dying? We got like one true death of somebody and it was so glazed over. It was so just, yeah, with Ferox, I think it was just like he was torn apart in his house and had blood everywhere. And I was like, what? That's not, I mean, that's one person <laughs> that died <laughs> for the rest of them. Yeah. Um, and she tried to use that retrospection later and it just didn't it feel earned you know she he was like I feel like I'm always back in the war like later on like yeah and, it, and I was just like but you barely mentioned any of that you know like so yeah you're it's implying like that he has PTSD yeah it's like the characters are supposed to be experiencing trauma after the war but you didn't even know what, what they went through because you didn't see it or experience it, experience it because she didn't explore it or tell you. Like, so you, there's a lot of assumptions going on for the reader to like make sense of like how the plot is being crafted. And it's just like, so ultimately it was, I don't wanna say it was a bit of a fail. I mean, as far as Garb August, was it fun? <laughs> Absolutely. Like, could I recommend this to people? I don't know just know that like you're going if you're like all about you want to see a love story then you know that's what you're going to get but anything else no you know? yeah and oh another thing I did like a lot was giving Remus a uh, dyslexia and then having a kind of notice saying that in dyslexia was only acknowledged in 1980 whatever in the UK um and so in the beginning you're kind of like why aren't people saying that he has dyslexia when he obviously has dyslexia and then later on in 1987 or whatever grants like you have dyslexia and i was like why does he know oh yeah and, and remus doesn't and then there's a chapter note and it's like this is the year that dyslexia was recognized in in great britain or something and i was like oh well that's pretty cool yeah yeah i yeah i mean there are, it's not badly it's not like it's this is somebody's passion project it was clearly somebody's passion project i think that that is pretty apparent and that she was probably writing for her fans who wanted to see the love story between remus and the other character in case we're not spoiling it well we're in the <laughs> spoiler section well, yeah, we are. and hey, there's remus. a synopsis saying it's wolf star meaning that it's though it's explicitly that coupling oh i didn't know that oh is that like a thing <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's oh. like a tag for the fan fiction. Wolf Star means that expressly Remus and Sirius will be a couple. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, oh. well, it was a shock <laughs> for you then, I guess. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I knew it because we had talked about it prior. Oh, okay. Well, but I, but I also knew that that was part of like a, the fan fiction. I, I like knew on some level that, that was a fan fiction thing, and then we had talked about it. I think when you were selling me the idea you were like it's Remus and Sirius the love story and I'm just like huh <laughs> what are you talking about um but I, I mean it was so it didn't I knew it was coming I just yeah it the whole it's it's an interesting thing <laughs> fan fiction because it's like 
you really are just reading it for the fun of it. And if yeah. you're in it for that and you're not really in it for anything else and you're a fan of Harry Potter, but you don't want to support Rowling or you have your reasons for not reading Harry Potter, then like this is a wonderful, cozy, warm alternative, if not slightly disappointing in the plot department. <laughs> yeah. And you can, I would say, read it at your leisure and it wouldn't affect anything and you can dip in and out. You could only read the certain parts of the year that you want to even and it wouldn't matter because the plot is sort of extra extemporaneous yeah Ex extemporaneous <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> extra it's so extra <laughs> well sometimes it is pretty extra but uh um, yeah yeah so I think yeah like it it's definitely a feat and I'm glad that I read it and it might spring me springboard me into other fan fiction that people have codified as like actual Harry Potter books, like people trying to make Harry Potter eight or something themselves, whatever. The thing for me that I thought was beneficial was that I didn't think that I would be, I didn't, I did not think that I would have any feelings at all entering the Harry Potter world because traditionally I don't <laughs> I'm not like oh Harry Potter's on television like I love that or like I glance a book on my shelf I'm not like oh like oh that's so... like the moment I was in like the Gryffindor common room and they're talking about like the pranks and like the halls and the portraits moving I was just like I'm back <laughs> like, like yeah. welcome home Shelly <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was, yeah, it's very cozy in the beginning. Yeah, and I think that it remains cozy. Oh, and then there was one, like, tiny critique that, it, but it was springboarding off of what you said, because you were, like, saying that she wanted to keep them young, but they have so much intercourse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. I am just like, you guys are supposed to be pulling pranks and stuff, and there's there's a lot going on. <laughs> Yeah. I've never read Twilight, but you said it was like Twilighty. Yeah, and... people are hooking up a lot and and the melodrama of the sort of obstacles that they face in because in sort of the of hookups. The, that and and it's just sort of a staple of of that kind of fiction that there's the ill communication, right? Like teenagers can't speak to each other properly and it causes misunderstandings and so now they're kind in of like stuff. a relationship in which it's a um a sexual relationship but they can't talk it out because they can't talk about their feelings. It was very that, but All literally the time, there yeah. is <laughs> there was a part of me that was just like, you know, like we're we're cozying up with Remus and he's still struggling with himself. And then all of a sudden I'm like, you and you and Sirius are having some times. But and I was just like, can we just can we just move on? so yeah. it's kind of a weird experience for me because on the one hand I was like it does feel angsty teen but sometimes it does feel quite young and in my young in my mind my young mind I was just like why are we promoting so much activity <laughs> of that nature yeah I was like I there think... are more fun things to do than... <laughs> yeah well I guess they're really bored at Hogwarts where there's magic <laughs> yeah but I just felt like I was just like it's cool and all I just was like at some point I wanted it to be a little more than getting it on or coming out as werewolf and queer like if she could have evolved past those three things I was like that would have been wonderful <laughs> yeah I think she's just very interested in that yeah so I guess maybe on that note if you're interested in that if it sounds like your kind of read then yeah, go for it. If you're like all about Harry Potter, what is it called? Wolf, Wolf Star? Wolf Star, yeah. Harry Potter Wolf Star in a fan fiction format, probably written by Taylor Swift. <laughs> probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then maybe All the Young Dudes is for you. Mm -hmm. And you can get it from Archive of Our, our Own, which is just- Archive of Our Own, yeah. Yeah, we're all, well, not all, there's fanfiction.net, but a lot of them are sort of all located there, more or less, or migrate there at one point or another. And you can download a whole bunch of different formats, PDF, uh, Kindle, lots of different things going on. And if you want uh, to print the novel, 
self-publishing on Lulu, because if you don't keep it private, you will probably be banned from the site for trying to print uh, something that is linked to J.K. Rowling and Harry Potter. <laughs> um, yeah. I'll have a link in your notes that people can get, and there will be an explainer um, on how to do that, as well as the PDF files and the Kindle link. So it's a, it's all located there for you. So yeah, check the show notes down below. I'll also link, um, there is an audio version on YouTube. Mm. Um, and I think it is sped up. It's tolerable uh, to listen. And so if you want an audio version of this or to get dive in and you're not sure if you want to, um, I would say listen to it, but if you can speed up the audio, that'll save you quite a bit. So <laughs> that's all of our tips, tricks, spills, spoils. You have all the things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for coming on my channel. Thanks and for having me. And thanks for reading this with uh, me for Garb Argus. That was pretty fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm glad we did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>